This video is to demonstrate how to use pictures to model a structure in PLS Poll. We're going to start with version 14 of PLS Poll. I'm going to do a File, New, Standard Interface. We have a blank screen ready to start. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to Drafting Attachments, Attachment Manager, and I'm going to attach a picture, uh, first of all, with the birthmark of the poll. So I'm going to open up this uh, picture that I took of the birthmark and I'm going to attach this to the background view of the structure. Uh, I'm going to start it at 75% over the screen width at the very top uh, and I'm going to make it only 25% of the screen size so it's kind of up and out of the way. And when I click OK we'll see our poll right here. We'll go ahead and OK out of our attachment manager. It may be kind of hard to see, but it's a western red cedar class 3 40 foot pole that we took a picture of. So I'm going to go and add that pole. I'm going to add a pole model, clicking the add pole button here, and we're going to use a western red cedar class 3 40 foot pole, and make sure we choose a western red cedar material, and there's our standard pole. So we've got that done so far. Now we're going to attach a picture of the entire poll. So if I go to Drafting, Attachments, Attachment Manager, and this time I'm going to attach this picture 371 of the poll, and I'm going to open that one. And I'm just going to use this one into the uh, what we call the structure view. I'm just going to accept the defaults and say OK. Uh, you can kind of see the picture here. Uh, now this can be any picture. I happen to take the picture of this poll with uh, my iPhone with a survey application called Theatolite installed and that survey application will print uh, the attributes, the lat long, the altitude, bearing and everything of the picture as you take it. Now I'm going to calibrate this picture. It's going to be just a little hard because the pole is right behind the picture. So I'm going to go to Drafting, Attachments. So I'm going to quickly move it, just kind of move it over out of the way so we can calibrate it. So there's my pole. And now we can calibrate this by going again to Drafting, Attachments, and it's called Stretch. And so when I do this, I'm going to click on Stretch. I'm going to stretch that uh, overall picture there. Uh, now down at the bottom in the status bar, it says click on the control key to mainstream to aspect ratio. I'd recommend doing that. So I'm going to put my mouse at the top of the pole. I'm going to click on the picture. Then I'm going to click on the pole. Now I'm going to go to the ground line and click on the ground line in PLS Pole. And you'll see that our picture is now calibrated to fit the pole. Now we're assuming that the pole is properly embedded, so uh, uh, that's an assumption that you may want to verify from another way. You could also put a measuring stick on the pole. Lots of things that you could do if you want to do this, but this is just a basic way to demonstrate how to do this. Okay, so now we've got our picture uh, calibrated to our pole, and we can see our arms and our braces and insulators there. And so now I'm going to add an element. And so I'm going to click on that button right there, add an element, and I'm going to say add an element to this particular pole, and I'm going to say add framing. And when I do that, I'll get a chance to pick my framing here. Now the framing I know happens to be a RUS, uh, what's called a VD1. Now I'm going to use this filter in our framing and I can find that VD1. There's that framing very quick there. So I'm going to say OK. That's the framing that I want. Verify that. OK. And our framing is there. Now I insert it low on purpose to demonstrate that you can grab that entire framing and move it to right where it is on the picture and uh, it appears that perhaps maybe uh, this particular company had a slightly different uh, spacing on the bottom cross arm and the V braces than the standard RUS configuration. We could go in and tweak that if we wanted to, but in the interest of uh, this video, I'm just going to leave that the way it is right now. And uh, so now we've got that uh, set on there. Now this poll is kind of basic, but I just do want to illustrate that you can go in and add all sorts of other framing components here. I'm going to go to Framing Manager. And uh, if we do that, um, we can uh, kind of just have a little fun here to demonstrate how something could be done. If I wanted to, you know, if I add a single or double or triple, I'm going to add a double transformer. And you can just drag and drop it. So if we had a picture of the transformers on there, I could match right on top of where the transformers would go. 
Uh, I'm going to grab a sidewalk guy over here just to demonstrate that. And uh, so I'm going to put that sidewalk guy up there. Uh, if we had that, of course, we could move it and tweak it if we need it to. And then um, I'm going to grab a I'm going to grab a shorter Cobra Head Street light and we'll drag that and put it on the pole. Let's just say that it was about right there. So there's our street light. Now the street light may not be oriented correctly uh, so you can come in here and click on that and say member info and click on that and you get a table uh, using standard configuration in PLS poll 180 is to the left when you're looking at a poll on a local coordinate system and so now we can swing that street light all over the street there of course that's not what's on this structure but I just want to demonstrate that those things could be added now I'm going to delete those elements. There's a button there that says delete element. So I'm going to blow away the transformer and the street uh, sidewalk guy and the street light. So we're back to our normal picture here. Okay, now we can rotate our pole around and start looking at it from different angles. Now it would be kind of hard to see there's a communication cable in this particular view. So I'm going to look at it straight from the right side. You'll see a button that says view from the right. So I'm going to look at the uh, right side of the pole there. Let me make sure I get that centered. So I'm looking at the right side of the pole. And if I had a picture from the right side, I could attach that as well. So I'm going to go to drafting, attachments, attachment manager, and I'm going to say attach. And we're going to take that picture from the right side of the pole, this one right here. And uh, we're going to do it in the structure view here. Now, since it's uh, from the right side, I'm going to do an azimuth of minus 90 degrees here, down here in the azimuth of the picture. And not minus 90 is counterclockwise looking from the top of the pole. So we're going to rotate it so we see it from the right. And uh, there's our picture right there. Now, of course, I could calibrate it just like we did a while ago. And once our picture is calibrated, you will see straight from the side here from the pole. So we've got the side of that pole now. I can see that communication cable down there uh, at the bottom. So I could go back to my um, uh, framing manager and I'm going to go grab a uh, communications attachment. If it was a dead end, we could do that. This is obviously a non-dead end, a tangent communications attachment. And I'm going to drag it and drop it right on that where that cable attaches on the side of the pole. And so now with a few clicks, you can see how we model up that particular pole. Uh, let me zoom in and look at that. Now it looks kind of funny because a picture doesn't rotate in 3D with the pole, but we can see how that model has been completely uh, modeled up. Now again, we could tweak the exact locations. So it looks like maybe this pole may have been misdrilled a little bit or possibly uh, the company just had a different spacing standard or something on this uh, view here. So. Uh, the model's done. We have now completed a PLS pole model just from the pictures, uh, fairly accurately representing what's out there in the field. To carry this one step further, just want to show that we can take this pole. Uh, we could take it and put it in PLS CAD if you didn't see the XYZ video uh, talking about how to place structures in XY locations in PLS CAD. Of course, you could do all the other poles down the line, place them overall PLS CAD like in that video. If you just wanted to do a single pole analysis, uh, you can click this button right here that's going to export this model to PLS CAD Lite. So I'm going to demonstrate that. It says OK to save your model now. It's been saved. We're going to uh, save it. I'm just going to call this test at LOA. And so now we have our uh, PLS CAD Lite beyond the scope of most of this video. But to demonstrate the final part of this, I'm just going to say OK, except the uh, uh, defaults. You could change your criteria if you wanted to use a GO95 or any other NESCs or your own criteria. Uh, in this case, we're just using that criteria right there. Um, I'm not going to change the cables. I'm going to assume that we have a Drake ACSR, a rather large cable, uh, with 250 foot spans on all the places. Just leave that as for a quick assumption here. Uh, we'll, we'll rotate our 3D and uh, let me just kind of zoom in here to demonstrate that we now have this tangent pole modeled up as we just did and uh, so of course the, the final part of this is to simply go to structures check and so within a few seconds we will have our analysis and our pole happens to be 170% stressed. Uh, the quick answer, I like to look at the geometry. I'll say OK. Uh, we can click on the set button here 
and uh, I'm going to say don't show all the deflections underneath the different uh, def loadings there. Uh, looks like uh, 250B grade C construction in this particular pole is controlling and if I were to click on apply and look at it from the left we can see that our insulators are about 40% overstressed with our larger conductors and our pole is about 70% stressed over uh, in the middle of the pole. Uh, it is important to note that even though this is just a 40 foot pole uh, even the maximum point of stress occurs above the ground line. Uh, very rarely do poles break at the ground line uh, unless they have um, uh, ground rod or other issues going on, but a normal pole uh, will typically be breaking up in this area in the middle of the pole right here. So that kind of wraps up how to model up a structure very quickly using pictures. Uh, again, any type of picture can be used. This demonstration used pictures from an iPhone, and hopefully this will help you model up your PLS pole models for your projects. If you'd like to learn more information about our software, you can see our website at www.powline.com. If you'd like some information about our software, you can contact us directly at info at powline.com. And finally, if you would like to purchase our software, you can contact our sales team directly at sales at powline.com. We look forward to hearing from you soon.